The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And, of course, I didn't come to you here at this time yesterday because right before the show started, that miserable Spectrum company, for some reason, cut off Internet. And uh, it took me five minutes to actually place a phone call. So it must have been a bigger uh, outage than I thought. Didn't actually come back till about 4.30 or something. But I was long gone. If there's no Internet, there is no trading. And if there's no trading, what, can I, what good am I? Anyway, live to trade, trade to live on this day. Anyway, I shook my fist at them thusly. Uh, so we had a little bit of volatility today. Uh, earlier, we were down uh, about 15 points or one. Yeah, about 15 points, maybe 16 points. Uh, we're flat right now in the S&P cash. Question is whether or not it drummed up any volume whatsoever. Uh, yesterday, we didn't even make 6 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. Right now, we're at 3.9 billion. And again, you don't like to see volume fall out at highs. That's almost a, if, if it stays there, almost a good sign of distribution. Uh, we continue to see stocks have uh, spurious and dubious. Dubious and spurious or spurious and dubious? Attorneys at law. Uh, if uh, if we could see those upgrades, or you know, that are good for about a day or two, they're good for running shorts out of the market. Is basically what they do with them. Uh, but uh, and then downgrades too. If they're short and they want to get out, eh, they call up their buddies, get a few downgrades going. Uh, anyway, for what we have, there just isn't a lot of juice either to move up or down. And, of course, FOMC meeting tomorrow. And after the bell tonight, we've got uh, the the uh, Fruit Computer Company, otherwise known as the Apple one. Um, what else do we have coming in tomorrow night after that? Uh, Advanced Micro Devices, Twilio, Groupon, Tandem Diabetes, FireEye. Uh, to, 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 to Paycom, Akamai, Vertex Pharmaceuticals, Devon Energy, Frontier Communications, Zendesk, Denny's. Got a lot of uh, new IPOs filing uh, in the last few days. A um, bunch of them are small companies you've probably never heard of. The one that I like out of the bunch, I like the company. I have no idea of whether or not would like the stock is Slack. It's uh, a uh, wonderful and brilliant uh, messenger service for people in groups. Uh, not person to person, although it does do that. I've been using it for the last two years. It's been flawless for me. Uh, they do not make money yet, though. And the question is, uh, if they get all this cash, will they be able to go uh, after they go public, will they be able to turn it into dollars? I'm not big on betting on it. I do like the product, though. I don't see why they could not. Uh, the reason I think they're going uh, to IPO is that Microsoft has been working on a competing platform to put together with LinkedIn. And it's hard to tell whether or not enough people would use it, certainly for Microsoft. It's a, it's a wonderful add-on and a way to make a little bit more money for uh, charging for these groups, especially if they can link it back into GitHub and some of the other ones. There is a little bit of uh, synergy out there. Um, do GitHub users use Slack? I don't know if it's GitHub itself 
but it's the same kind of uh, people. It's uh, Slack is extremely good when you have a lot of people uh, together that are working on a single project. Like if you're building a brand new plane at Boeing, that would be excellent use for Slack. Um, you have side channels where you can have uh, smaller discussions. You can have uh, kind of a universal channel, uh, channel for big um, announcements. So maybe you're the absolute top dog at Boeing and you're designing a new plane. You know, someone might be uh, part of the wing department. Some people might be in the engine uh, and jet engine department. Some people might be in the interior. Um, God knows how many people it takes to actually put together one of those planes from the ground up. But uh, that's an excellent. And whether or not it's a some kind of uh, a concrete product like a plane or software development, uh, but certainly I know a lot of people, I've been in it for two years because that's when I started it with machine learning. And almost all of the machine learning segments have a segment for it. I actually sponsored one for a while uh, until Microsoft came out with their version of Slack, which is called, uh, I, I want to say it's called Gitter, but it's a kind of like close to Glitter and Gitter together, G-L-I-T-T-E-R. Um, and it's a, a very nice product for what it does. I, it doesn't do anything close to what Slack does, though, the ability to actually put in uh, links and have uh, thumbnails of the links and side channels and uh, always be uh, uh, tracking everything that's said and done in the, in the room. Um, anyway, uh, an excellent product. Um, does everybody need all of that? The answer is no. Uh, it tends to be used by people that uh, are, have half a brain. Uh, so it may be a little on the technical side compared to the people that uh, are trying to just replace Yahoo Messenger. It's not that. It is much, much more. But it's mostly built for people uh, trying to accomplish a single mission, whether it's training people to use their product uh, or um, actually developing a product. But it tends to kind of be around that. Um, all kinds of Slack rooms for people. Uh, that are programmers and engineers and that kind of stuff. Anyway, I put one together for uh, the original nascent version of uh, Microsoft's uh, foray into machine learning. Um, and again, as soon as they opened up their own thing, uh, they probably they pretty much destroyed my Slack room. I had about 250 active users in there every day as it was getting started. In fact, uh, that 1.0 version of the machine uh, learning language, uh, ML.net, is almost ready to ship. I think we're on within the next couple of days. So I've had some products or projects that I've been working on for a while, waiting for them to finalize it. So I knew that uh, at least uh, everything wouldn't be changing on me on a daily basis. So I may be showing a little bit more. We've been, of course, working with the uh, sector oscillators for a long time. And uh, man, have they been killer at buying loads. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And I am back in the black. Uh, we'll take a quick uh, views. Yeah, there's, we just cracked 4 billion shares. So not a lot going on down half a point. Again, uh, we'll probably get a little bit of volatility with Apple after the bell and some of the other ones. But mostly it'll be Apple. Um, not exactly sure, but it seems to me, uh, from what I've seen, not a lot going on at Apple lately. So I'm wondering whether or not this last big giant run up is worth it. And again, uh, it's not that they're that I think that the market looks at the phone sales. I think they see the phone, the uh, add on sales of the uh, earbuds and some of the other stuff where they're making an enormous margin, making <clears throat> it's hard to make 65 percent margins year in, year out. Intel does it. Uh, in hardware, and so does uh, Apple, around 60%. But when you get an add-on product that costs you 50 bucks, and you get kind of even at the wholesale level, 150 bucks. If you're making 100% on it, you can make up a lot of make up for a lot of sins in your corporate world. Um, uh, what did what did Peter Schiff predict? Uh, not following it. Uh, anyway, uh, kind of interesting. So we're kind of waiting for earnings after the bell. Uh, kind of snuck a lot of people in. Um, this mar this is kind of a market which I suspect will fail. But it's going to give you about 100 different smaller signals to make you do something wrong so that you um, double, um, double uh, uh, check yourself when the signal actually does come. So I wouldn't get too excited about it now. We've got fun buying uh, coming for uh, the last three days of this week. That also would make up for a few of the sins. Uh, these IPOs also mean that they're going to try to push on this market. Uh, but I continue to think that actually going after individual stocks that are not going to get any love, uh, that are going to start moving down way before the market, and we've seen those like Google today uh, and uh, Tesla last week. There are a lot of very weak stocks out here in the marketplace. And 
you know, we'll just have to see how that actually pans out. But uh, I, I think there are a handful of these stocks that people just keep pushing on, but I, it's almost like pushing on a string. We'll look at some of those also today. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, and uh, of course, before we do that, we're going to do a little history. Then we'll get on, on with some charts. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It doesn't always repeat exactly, but it does kind of rhyme. On this day in 1803, representatives of the United States and Napoleonic France conclude negotiations for the Louisiana Purchase, a massive land sale that doubles the size of the young American Republic. What was known as the Louisiana Territory comprised of most of the modern-day United States between Mississippi and the Rocky Mountains, with the exceptions of Texas, parts of New Mexico, and other pockets of land already controlled by the United States. A formal treaty for the Louisiana Purchase, annotated to April 30th, was signed two days later. And, of course, uh, France was facing a blockade from England at the time uh, and several wars going on and needed the cash. I think it was about $11 million at the time, which is, uh, I don't know, about a billion now, probably. Uh, but even a billion dollars seems like a drop in the bucket for all that land today. As they say, they're not making any new land. And other than some uh, little uh, volcanoes making some uh, little tiny islands around Hawaii. That's mostly true. That's it. Uh, yes, well, the people there don't know what they're doing, and that's why it doesn't work. <coughs> anyway, uh, again, um, that's about it for the history. Let's get into some charts. Um, yes, I could make it work, like I always said I can, but I'm not going to go down there and do it for free. You can spend your time doing it. Okay. Um, like I said, a lot of stocks uh, continue to break out. Uh, some have volume, some do not. Uh, but it seems like I'm going to still say 90% of them that are breaking out are continuing to pull back into the trading range once again. Aaron's Rents, which is a good, how can I say this, a good uh, barometer of the uh, working class man who uh, feels like he has to buy a television that's now 300 bucks on payments or a washer and dryer now that are about 500 bucks. Uh, but at some point, you know, everything gets wiped out. You need furniture, need a TV. You go to Aaron's rents. Now this did break out, which is a sign that the economy is under stress, or at least the people in the lower economic reigns are under economic stress. He had all the volume of the world, stood up there for one day, almost took back half the profits of that big bump on earnings. Now the next two days, we've pulled back down here to the support level. Now, just because these things are failing at the top doesn't mean that they're pulling back. It just means that no one's willing to buy these product, uh, stocks at higher prices. Uh, they're buying every pullback and uh, but I'm really watching this as it goes forward because I think it's one of those canary in the coal mines like packaging companies and others that really tell you what's going on. After the bell tomorrow night, we also have AMD. Uh, this one uh, had a nice little gap up on the third uh, with uh, almost 200 million shares. It's pulled back on light volume. Doesn't look bad. I just don't understand how these guys are making the kind of money they say they do. I always feel like I'm going to wake up one day and find out that their books are cooked. Um, they're doing okay. It just seems like, man, uh, for second best in processors and second best in video cards, they continue to make a lot more money than I would ever think. So we'll look at that. Uh, to, to do a Crombie and Fitch. Uh, some of these retailers, the last store in the mall, apparently, uh, back up and testing the August 14th high of last year. 
$29.49. That had uh, seven, excuse me, 4.75 million shares. We're into it with 1.2 million shares. Again, we really have anything to run about except the last earnings that came in on March 6. I think this one's also setting up for a surprise to the downside. Angie's List, um, never liked this company when it went public. Uh, it had been in business for like 10 or 15 years up to that point. It had never made a dime. It had done nothing but lose money. Went public and did nothing but lose money. And then they turned around and made money for a little little while and it got up to 24 bucks. But uh, never has really been that much. I'm always a little gun shy about companies that never make money before they go public. This one was forever. Never made any money. And we shall see. Be back. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And, of course, uh, keep those cards and letters coming. I've got a couple of uh, questions already in the, uh, in the, in the mix. Uh, the first one is, uh, why do I like Slack so much? A little more in depth. Uh, mostly because it runs on my uh, Android phone, or if you've got uh, iOS, it runs on that. Runs on Mac, runs on Windows, runs on Linux. In fact, basically runs anything anywhere in the world. It's got, uh, if you put a link in it, it'll automatically drag it up. If you put a uh, link in it from YouTube, it'll automatically pull that up and show 
um, kind of a little preview for it. Uh, but it just works amazingly good with groups, which is one of the reasons why I like it so much. But yeah, uh, everywhere, not just on Windows or just not on this or that or the other. And it all seems to work. It worked as well on my phone as it did on Linux as it did on uh, Windows. So I don't have any Apple products, so I can't tell you on that. But I never hear anybody complain um, online about having issues with it. It may be a little bit more complex than just the basic Yahoo Messenger app, but uh, seems to work extremely well. Anyway, like that. Um, got another question. Is there anything really exciting uh, going on right now in technology? And I have to say that it's been very quiet, probably since the first of the year, much quieter about new products and new new things going on that actually are kind of earth shattering. There's been a lot of evolutionary things, but not revolutionary things. I think the one kind of revolutionary thing I put in the Tech Insider on Friday, which is on some of the stocks that I've played in the past. Um, anyway, we're looking at that stuff. But, uh, you know, the, the thing that I've been excited most about was that this keyboard I have, I'll show it here, which is, I don't know, probably two or three years old. I, I tend to go through keyboards because I kind of hit on them pretty hard, and I'm kind of a hard typist. Uh, but... Uh, that's, you know, about a $45 keyboard, and I uh, saw an ad at Best Buy today, and uh, they were 15 bucks. so I ordered a few of them for all my PCs, and they're all going to get their own brand new keyboard. But I'm sure Microsoft's probably going to come out with something to replace it, but at the meantime, for 15 bucks for the Battleship uh, keyboard with all the features it has on it, I love it. Um, but uh, who knows what they're going. they got a wireless one out that's about 100 bucks. But um, I'm not a big fan of wireless um, stuff just because if you play any games, there's a little bit of lag in it. So I kind of like wired stuff. The, I do have a wired trackball, but mostly I use a, wire, uh, a wireless trackball when I'm not playing games or doing anything that needs interaction. So we're off one point on the S&P cash. We're going to go back and look at some more charts here. Uh, Avon products, I didn't even know they're still in business, but uh, they've had a nice pop off about a buck 30 up to $3.41. Now they've had a triple top up here at three forty one. Can't really short it, but man, if you're probably long, it probably time to ring the bell on that one. Beckinson Dickinson, isn't it? Or no, this is Beacon Roofing and Supply. Uh, we've had a few earnings out from uh, the uh, housing business. Not a lot of them have been encouraging, but at the same time, not seeing a, a lot of people running for the hills either. I think that will either break out or change tomorrow. Beacon Roofing Supply, B-E-C-N, it's a symbol on this one, uh, is still hanging out at highs from this February 8th high that had uh, 2.8 million shares. Uh, you got into it with 800,000 shares about five days ago. It's done nothing but go sideways. I think a lot of these stocks are just waiting for uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Godot, the head of uh, the uh, Fed. And of course, uh, someone said earlier uh, that the president was tweeting about the Fed. <laughs> And, of course, we've got the tweeter in chief probably, you know, saying, don't don't take the punch away from the party. The party will turn south. And, uh, of course, that's why we kind of almost always have excesses. Um, I think Greenspan kind of got into that trap, which is he got in front of the market early uh, and then was gun shy to make the right decision later. And of course. Economists almost always make the wrong decision, so I don't know if that's anything different. But, um, you know, there's always this pressure on to keep the party going, whether or not you need to pull it back. I don't think we've had anybody uh, since the 80s uh, that was willing to go through the pain. And I think you have to have a president that's popular enough, uh, like Reagan was, that it just doesn't matter. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have that kind of president. Again, 
with maybe 25 percent of the people identifying with either socialists or communists now. You're not going to get those guys to like anybody, uh, but uh, eh, you never know. Uh, cake will go out there. Uh, okay. Cheesecake Factory. Um, I could use a little cheesecake, but man, apparently the charts are not liking this. February 21st, $50.07, 3 million shares going into that yesterday with 854,000 shares. Big reversal today. Volume is picking up. Um, going to exceed yesterday's, going to close below yesterday's open. So you've got a little bit of that. Energy off this March 20th low, not as good as one would hope. Another uh, kind of company like Aaron's Rents, I've never been in this, but all the descriptions I've read, kind of uh, a cross between Best Buy and Aaron's Rents uh, is cons. I guess they're north, maybe on the East Coast or something. I haven't read about them in a while, uh, but they came off a $17 low back on December 27th. They got up to 25.78 with 750,000 shares. Tested it again with 370,000 shares a few days ago, and it just gone sideways. I like these things to kind of get into the gap, which would be about 27, 27.50, maybe up to 28 bucks, uh, and then try to pull the rip cord on it question is if Best Buy looks like it's going to have some problems. Uh, and my guess is it's going to have problems for a couple of reasons. One, uh, there's not going to be a lot of 5G phones. People are going to want to wait and buy 5G phones. And uh, so Best Buy probably going to have some issues into next year because that's a huge part of their business. I don't see anything else really for next Christmas that is really going to push a lot of people. Televisions have become incredibly cheap. Um, you only spend big money on it if you really need to spend big money on a TV. You can buy, what, a 50 or 60-inch television for 400 bucks now. Uh, high def uh, with all the bells and whistles now. So I don't know if that's a big thing. Um, I think they did well last year because a lot of people were wanting to buy them. But, man, the price since Christmas has absolutely been devastated on TVs. Um, I'm watching this because I think you could have a fairly decent pullback, at least to the $60 level in the retail space. We'll be back in a minute. Make sure and give me a uh, email or a phone call at 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And uh, people are comparing Mr. Powell to a tower of jello in the den. Mm. You never know. Um, maybe he gets a backbone. Maybe he doesn't. Who knows? I tell you what, it's very tough to have the entire world lined up against you saying, don't stop the party. Don't stop the party. Because that's the chant. And it's not. he's not the first one to hit it. But I think since they've had a Fed, Volcker is the only one that's ever stood up. And I have a feeling that that is because he had a president that would allow him to do it, but I don't, there hadn't been one since. I do not think. Um, the Tower of Jell-O. Uh, to to Salesforce.com, little test on lighter volume back on March 1st. It had 166.15, uh, to uh, three, uh, let's call it 6.9 million shares. Got into it yesterday with 4.5 million shares. So not as bad as some other ones. Uh, the problem with this stock was it had poor earnings and said it was going to have future poor earnings. Uh, the one and only uh, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. Feelgood, uh, Mr. Kramer, uh, did everything in the world to, to pimp that stock on his uh, TV show and pretty much recovered after a few days of absolutely beating the table on coming back on it. But again, some of these stocks out here really seem long in the tooth. Uh, this one doesn't have as bad as volume as other ones, uh, but I continue to see Microsoft and some of the other ones uh, kind of eat away at the forward growth in Salesforce. They're still doing well, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about uh, Salesforce, this and that. I hear a lot of people talking about uh, AWS and Microsoft Azure, depending on which flavor they have. I don't even see hear that much about Google's uh, web systems either. Uh, it's kind of those two that everybody seems to be splitting on in the future. Uh, the real reason for going with Salesforce is not that they offer uh, fairly uh, well-discounted uh, cloud systems. It's the software that they're Offering is very specialized for what you need. And eh, I'm going to say that the, like the top 100 S&P companies, they have their own software divisions and do everything internally. But the uh, next 400 S&P companies down uh, tend to really spend a lot of time um, having other companies uh, like the Amazon Web Services or Google Web Services or Azure from uh, Microsoft um, do stuff for them. Now, Salesforce still works good, but let me put it this way. It's kind of tough to see what's going on in Salesforce because the people in Salesforce, well, they're like that movie. The first rule of Salesforce is not to talk about Salesforce. Apparently, you just don't hear a lot about it, about what they're doing internally. Everybody's fairly closed-lipped about what's going on there. El Dorado Resorts uh, had a nice high on February 28th. 
$50.97 with 2.75 million shares. Tested it yesterday with 700,000 shares. Nice little reversal out here today. Again, the uh, energy off this March 7th low, uh, about half of what it was in the last leg up, even though it took just a little short movement. Do uh, we have any more emails here? What do I think about Apple? Like I said, uh, I think you're going to see iPhone sales dip a little bit, and I think you're going to see the numbers kind of come in as expected. I think they've already told everybody that sales on the iPhone aren't ever going to be what they were before, but they're going to make it up like a Kirby vacuum cleaner by adding attachments and other things they can sell to you. Uh, of course, they've been talking about becoming a media company uh, and a services company. I don't see any evidence that that's gone anywhere. Um, and again, everybody that tells me they want to become a media or company seems to uh, fail. Uh, GoPro, the biggest example. They weren't a, can a company that made uh, very durable video cameras for sports guys. They were a, a company that was a media platform. And of course, that went a whole lot of nowhere. Apple has its own problems of its own making. And that is it destroyed an entire industry for the music industry. And everybody's got a 11-foot pole because a 10-foot pole isn't good enough for Apple. Uh, so creators, especially in the video industry, movie industry, have a kind of a, a love-hate relationship. They know that it will work very good uh, in the short term. Uh, but I even had a friend uh, that in real estate tell me, he uh, works in the Midwest. I was talking to him a couple of weeks ago. He said that, you know what? We should have never given Zillow and all these companies all the data from the MLS system because they're now absolutely beating us to death with it. And they're offering sales on lower, mar uh, lower uh, um, uh, commission rates and other things like that. And it's absolutely killing us. And I thought, you know, of Apple when he told me that. And the music business was going to make a lot of money. Uh, but the album sales are gone, and that's what most of the money was made now. Uh, as an artist, if you can make some money, it's going to be not on what you sell uh, for vinyl or uh, a CD or even streaming. Uh, the money you're going to make is out on tour. And uh, they used to make money both on the album sales and on tour. And you could pick one or both in the music uh, industry before, now you only have one choice, and that's can you fill seats at uh, a fairly decent uh, place that will hold a 1,500 to 3,000 people. If you can do that, you can make a good living in the music business. If you can fill 500 seats at a high dollar rate, you can still do that. And older acts actually making about 80% of all the money in music now for touring, if you look at from the Rolling Stones, you look at the rest, um, that's because there just isn't anybody that has a lot of traction or staying power. So um, we continue to see if uh, see ads and variety uh, warning that there be dragons ahead if you get involved too deeply with Apple and their ecosystem. Um, but, uh, you know, you've pulled back, you got to 200 bucks. You bounced a little off of that today. Um, I don't know how investors are going to react if they see the phone sales are down, but the money's coming back in from earbuds and other things that they're selling. Um, they also don't really make that much money for the people that write apps. You can, you have almost a zero chance of making any money if you write an app for Apple now. Um, and again, there are a lot of apps there. But if you're making money, you got a, a legacy product that's made money on the uh, iPhone before. You know, maybe you've got enough uh, stuff, but I mean, they got millions and millions of people that have written apps uh, for the iPhone. And the problem is that, you know, just getting what you want is a problematic and tough. Uh, there's too much. And of course, uh, Apple doesn't do a lot of good to nurture and build new companies they just like the big companies that are big like them 
They don't like dealing with other people, which means they don't get a lot of innovation, which is another problem I dislike about Apple. Uh, we're going to be back. <laughs> I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we said, uh, hang on in the uh, next hour for Tom O'Brien. And then, of course, the hour after that, is the hour of earnings. We'll take a look at Apple. Apple comes out at 4.30, so you're going to have to hang on for a little bit. Um, you've got advanced micro devices coming out right after the futures close at 4.15. Twilio at 4.15. Groupon at 5.10. I don't know if that even matters anymore. FireEye in the security uh, department, 4.05. Um, Akamai Technologies at 4, so right at the bell. I don't think that's going to be enough to move the futures around that much. Uh, now, tomorrow morning when you wake up, uh, you're going to be looking at CVS Healthcare, Ameren Corporation, Clorox, Estee Lauder, Yum Brands, Garmin, Humana, Royal, B, uh, Royal Caribbean Cruises, uh, uh, Hilton Worldwide, Trivago, Molson Coors, Pitney Bowes, CME Group, Johnson Controls, Harris Corporation, uh, Kamiko. Their chart actually had something uh, that I was looking at, CCJ. Let's pop that up before we go. I remember seeing that this morning as I went through a lot of these. Um, it's come back on lighter volume and back into its 2.7 million share December 24th low. 
It's ten dollars sixty one cents. Um, still thirty cents above it. You had kind of a big range in Doji today with just one and a half million shares, so it may come back in there for about ten dollars. Nice trading range from you know ten and a half to thirteen bucks is actually quite the range. Um, don't see where uranium's going uh, the way of the dodo anytime soon, so I like that. Uh, to, to, if there's anything else going on, do I have any other questions? Uh, that's it. Uh, as I said uh, in the den during one of the breaks, uh, in uh, one of the Raiders movies, Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, it says, only the penitent man will pass. Make sure and wait for the whites of their eyes here in the next couple of days for the big signal. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.